All right, time to learn about the hierarchy of life. Um, when I think about the hierarchy of life, it's really how scientists organize stuff from very small to very big. Um, so let's use a really simple example to start. So right here, I'm in this box. And I don't know how I feel about it, but it's all right for now. And you can see I have all these other boxes surrounding the box that I'm currently in. Um, so let's just imagine that this first box represents my classroom. So usually we're hanging out in the class, we're learning about biology, and we're interacting back and forth. Um, the next thing you think of as you get bigger, this classroom is a part of Woodier. So Woodier, all of a sudden when we talk about Woodier, new properties emerge because we're talking about a different system. So Woodier has different departments, has different shops, um, so it acts and behaves differently. Even bigger than Woodier is the town of Haverhill. Woodier is in this town. When we talk about Haverhill, different properties emerge there as well. Um, we have voting, we have different citizens, we have different parks and different things that Woodier has to take into context and into consideration. Even bigger than Haverhill is the beautiful state of Massachusetts. And as we get bigger to Massachusetts, different properties emerge as well. Massachusetts has to take into account the different counties it has to figure out how all the energy is going to get to these different towns. It has different things and different considerations that it has to be taken into account. So as we go from really small to really big, different properties emerge and these behave differently as we go up. This is the definition of emergent properties. It's when systems combine to form more complex behaviors as a collective. So if we look at this system back here, the classroom is going to behave a lot differently and woodier then if we look at Massachusetts, different properties emerge. Okay, let's look at living things and let's look at biology and how we organize them from very small to very big. Our first one we want to look at is the organism. So if I was going to draw an amazing sweet organism, I'd choose the beautiful duck. So here's the best duck drawing that you've ever seen. All right, and it's got a sweet haircut right here. So here's one duck, it's an organism. If we go on a population, the only difference is that in this context, it's several ducks. So we're gonna have a duck friend and it has really big eyes for some reason. Here's our duck friend. And we're gonna make this duck have long hair. All right. Now we're getting bigger and different properties emerge. Um, as we go to the com community, the only difference is that there's going to be several different populations living in a defined area. So we're going to have these ducks, but we also might have some birds. We all might also have a beautiful turtle. Here's its shell, here's its head, and here's its feet. <laughs> okay, so a community, all of a sudden you have these different populations interacting and they might be competing for food, um, they actually might be eating each other, something like that. Let's get even bigger. When we look at an ecosystem, the difference between an ecosystem and a community is the ecosystem takes into account the living things, which are the duck, the turtles, and uh, these seagulls but also takes into account the non-living things or the abiotic factors. So in this case, we'd have these guys are all in the water. So water would be an example of something that's non-living. Also, you might consider the sun part of that. Uh, you might consider the air that they're breathing um, and different nutrients or soils that are in the water. Okay, let's get even bigger. Um, the next one is a biome. A biome is a collection of ecosystems that all have a similar climate. So uh, examples of that might be, might be the tundra. Another one might be a tropical rainforest, which would be great to visit. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so biomes is a collection of ecosystems that all have a similar climate. The biggest one of all is the biosphere and really this is any place where life 
can exist. So anywhere on the beautiful planet Earth where life can exist. Does this look like Earth? Oh boy, there's the oceans. Okay, so the hierarchy of life, we're going from really small to really big, and as we go from small to diff big, different properties emerge, and this is a way scientists try to organize life. Thank you.